Hello and welcome to another episode of Cryptane Weekly. This is number 20 and the biggest thing out right now is Pokemon Go. Uh, anyways, let's get right into that. Uh, so I'm sure you've probably heard of this little app called Pokemon Go where you can play on a map and you walk around GPS kind of like geocaching you go collect your Pokemons um, apparently this app is just huge uh, so it just shows the power of Nintendo and their properties um, so if you haven't I would recommend going to get that and checking that out but let's get into some details about that uh, so the way this game works is you can go around and you can collect Pokemon uh, by going around the map and you go to a location and you always have to leave the app open and when you get close to certain areas it'll be like oh there's a Pokemon around here and you gotta walk around and try to figure out where it is and then you can pop, you'll see it and you can, it'll pop up and you'll be able to click on it and you can kind of throw Pokeballs at it. Uh, you can uh, pick up your Pokeballs if you miss uh, so it's something to keep in mind you don't want to be wasting them by throwing them and not picking them back up um, but there's a whole mini game to how like there's a there's the main circle and another circle where you're kind of tossing it up, uh, kind of like that Facebook uh, Facebook soccer or basketball game actually now that I think about it, where you kind of toss it up from the bottom and you kind of grab these Pokemon. Um, you can also uh, you get these can every time you catch Pokemon you get candy and stuff. I believe you can. F uh, oh, at level nine you also get these new items that'll let you feed Pokemon. Uh, these little sweets to make them more uh, per, uh, easier to catch. Uh, so there's something to keep in mind if you're having trouble with a certain Pokemon, you can always come back later. Uh, if you want more Pokeballs, you get more every time you level up. Also, there's these Poke Spots, uh, uh, Poke Stops, at certain points in the world that you can go to. Uh, if you conveniently live right beside one, uh, the good thing is, is every five minutes or so, you can go back and keep collecting from the same one. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have to make a tour. Uh, but they refresh about every five minutes. Um, and then, uh, oh, so another, a good thing is so when you start the game, you have the choice between uh, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and uh, Squirtle. Uh, but if you walk away four or five times, I think, you can get uh, Pikachu. Uh, so if you want to start with Pikachu, that's one way to do it. Um, whew. Uh, anyway, so I got a whole bunch of links here uh, on GameSpot that go over all the essentials. Uh, what's coming, known issues, uh, battery drain is a big one apparently, crashing, uh, server overload. Uh, this is uh, done by a company by Niantech, I believe is what it's called, and they did another thing called Ingress, which was owned by Google originally, where they did a whole thing in the, in the world where you could take over points with everybody. And what you can also kind of do in Pokemon, you can actually go to a gym, there's gyms located around the world, you can use your Pokemon to battle at these gyms only as well as uh, defend them uh, with your team, uh, with your strongest Pokemon. Um, you also get eggs periodically when you go to Pokestops, uh, which you can put in an incubator and you can walk around to, uh, to hatch. You cannot drive, there's a certain speed that you can move at in which that it'll count, uh, so something to keep in mind. Um, but uh, one thing to note is that way back in the day, 2014, <laughs> back in the day, well anyways, 2014, uh, Google did an April Fool's joke where they did actually, based on their Google Maps, a Pokemon game, uh, kind of like this actually, and it and and a lot of people are saying this is the inspiration for this idea. Uh, it might have been in the works beforehand, who knows? Uh, but it's kind of crazy, and uh, their video is pretty crazy, pretty awesome. If you, I got a link to that where it shows Pokemon trailer, but then it shows the April Fool's joke trailer, and the April Fool's joke trailer is pretty darn good. Uh, so I would highly recommend checking that out. Anyways, but like I said, I got a, a whole bunch of tips and tricks and everything and plenty of videos for you to sit around if you want to be the Pokemon master that you dream of. Uh, not to mention that there are ways that if you can get Android running on your PC that you could uh, cheat out on the GPS to actually go collect uh, too to get around to certain areas. Uh, so something to consider if you don't feel like traveling. There might be ways to do that on your phone too where you'd be able to fudge the GPS coordinates. I don't know about that. Uh, possibly on a jailbroken or side-loaded apps might be able to allow you to do that, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. I would encourage you to check that out though because that'd be a cool way to, you know, not have to go anywhere. 
can still play Pokemon Go. <laughs> Anyways, uh, next up is uh, NES Classic. This is a, a little mini NES that Nintendo, it fits in the palm of your hand that they're coming out with. Uh, it's loaded up with 30 uh, classic Nintendo games. Uh, it's got an HDMI port, uh, uses what is a controller that looks identical to the NES controller, but you can also plug it into your Wii uh, if you wish to use it there, which is pretty nice. Uh, but you get 30 games, there's no way to get more games, this is not internet ready. Uh, but this is a good way, if it's $60 I believe, and this would be a good way to introduce people to like basically the 30 or what Nintendo considers like a good assortment of the main games for uh, NES back in the day. Uh, a couple that I know here are the three Super Mario Bros. games, uh, Tecmo Bowl, Legend of Zelda 1st and 2nd, uh, Castlevania 1st and 2nd, uh, Final Fantasy, uh, Kid Icarus, Kirby's Adventures, uh, so there's Metroid. Uh, <laughs> so there's plenty here to go. Uh, it comes with, uh, I believe, save states too you can do on this. Uh, but it's just a little console that you can kind of plug in. You could take it on the go if you wanted, but this would be a great gift uh, for uh, someone who enjoys those old games and wants an easy way to go back to that. Or, you know, even for that kid, 60... Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 30, 30 games, uh, classics, mind you, too. And uh, this would be a great way just to, to give your kids something to do. I mean, Final Fantasy is bajillions of hours. Castlevania, Legends, the we're well, not Legend, yeah, the Legend of Zelda is the first and second one. Second one highly underrated. Uh, so I would definitely give that a go. Uh, so Intel has come out with a a, co a new copy stick with an M3, a Core M3 in it, and still on, instead of an Atom processor. These are these little uh, flash drives, little thumbstick drive looking uh, computers that you just throw into your TV and an HDMI port and you uh, plug in a USB to power it and uh, you basically get the power of a, of, a, of a computer in this thumb drive looking thing. Uh, it's got Bluetooth pairing so you can have your, uh, your keyboard and mouse on it. You can, also, you can also plug it in through USB. I think it has one on the actual device and then the power brick it has two more USBs, so three USBs in total that you could use um, but yeah, it's actually a pretty decently powerful thing. It's four hundred dollars, mind you. But to think that you could boom, you just as long as you have an HD TV, you just throw this in it. Now you have uh, a computer to go, or uh, as well, and it has sixty-four gigabytes of space. Uh, so if you wanted to get your Minecraft on or something like that on your nice TV, that'd be one way to go. Um, but I would encourage you to check that out. I think that this is a cool little way to circumvent the smart TV. Smart TVs are fine and all that, but it's like a uh, incredibly closed ecosystem. It adds a lot of money to a TV, whereas if you just get this little this stick, I mean, I know it's four hundred dollars in this particular case, but it's decently powerful for the price, uh, and you're getting a full Windows com ten computer. Like that's pretty crazy. So you'd be able to do all your homework and whatever you wanted to do on there. Uh, that Windows can allow, assuming the space uh, allows for it. And you could also get uh, USB uh, external storage and stuff like that too, uh, if you ever wanted to. Okay, and then, uh, so I only did a couple articles this week, uh, and then, because I got things to do this weekend, uh. <laughs> but uh, the movie I watched, fantastic, you don't even need to know the title, it's just so good. Anyways, The Nice Guys, which is what it's called, uh, fantastic, amazing movie with Russell Crowe, Ryan Gosling, uh, and Angry Rice, I'm not sure if I butchered that name, uh, she's a young lady in the movie, uh, fantastic performances all around. I thought this movie was hilarious. It's based in the 70s, and it's about kind of like a uh, detective and and a guy who does like good deeds for money, so to speak, but like roughs people up in a good deeds kind of way. <laughs> uh, if you saw Deadpool, it's kind of the same thing with uh, Ryan Reynolds does in the beginning of the movie, uh, where he's helping out that girl uh, for money and he, and he harasses the guy. Uh, anyways, it's uh, these two uh, knuckleheads, and they just get into shenanigans and it's it's just it's just oh my god i don't even know how to say it. it's just hilarious uh, i think ryan gosling and russell crowe are some of my favorite actors uh, i've loved their movies in the past uh and this is this is this is no exception this is just a fantastic film i would highly recommend you go see it uh like just do it just do it just go nice guys just go get her done if you have a movie on your list that you need to see this is one of them for the year. Easily my favorite movie so far this year. Uh, anyways, so thanks for watching and peace out.